good evening everyone today we'll have a discussion on uh, case discussion on bronchial asthma so this child a three and a half year old male child sanjay who is a resident of delhi informant being mother came with the chief complaint of cough for five days running nose for three days and fast breathing for two days so whenever you have these kind of respiratory uh, complaints what is it like you have something called there are age specific disease, disorder that you have to uh, rule out okay and most of the time you have a overlapping respiratory as well as the cardiovascular issue so with the history of presenting illness you can delineate whether it's a cardiovascular system i'm dealing with or respiratory system i'm dealing with so when it comes to age specific usually bronchial pneumonia or any pneumonia that is common below 5 years of age which our patient also fits in in case of cystic fibrosis it starts the age of presentation it usually starts from newborn and also in the infancy okay so it can be in the newborn period or in the infancy itself foreign body fb is foreign body so foreign body can be happen can happen from almost from 1 year to 3 years or sometimes 9 years oh, sorry 9 months to 3 years okay this is the time where the ch child can have a choking episode all those things okay so when it comes to bronchiolitis any viral uh, bronchiolitis also it is more common in the case of infancy so in our case it's a 3 and a half year old so we are not dealing with bronchiolitis for probably maybe we can have a foreign body case or it could be a pneumonia case or it could be a asthma usually we say like after 5 years it's it can be stamped with a diagnostic investigation all those as a asthma below that we will be saying like hyperreactive airway disorder so with that uh, we can just say like with all the clinical features and others we can just say it is a hyperreactive airway disorder or something okay so we'll just elaborate all uh, each of these things so history of present illness this child is apparently normal before 5 days and the child started having cough for 5 days which is insidious in onset which is dry cough spasmodic that is spasmodic progressively increasing not associated with diagonal variation no aggravating or the relieving factor so this child is actually having a cough for 5 days and it's a dry in case so usually in case of pneumonia we will have a wet cough so still we need to rule out on it okay so it started with running nose and together with cough uh, it uh, running nose is clear fluid and it is not foul smelling and the child is also having fast breathing for the two days and this tachypnea dyspnea should not be used it should be in a patient's own word okay so next is like we are ruling out all the possibilities so with these things it could be something like grd or immunodeficiency or hyperreactive airway disorder or uh, pneumonia or bronchiolitis uh, age doesn't fit on to it okay or any allergic condition okay so any food allergy or uh, any drug exposure that has produced that way okay so um, so now we are having a no history of reduced oral intake or feeding difficulties which says that the child is not having a cvs problem because effort intolerance is not there okay no history of choking gagging arching or vomiting after any feeds this in turn rules out that the child is i'm not dealing with a grd or any kind of foreign body okay but still we have to keep our foreign body in our dd uh, even like most of the time they may not be able to tell that uh, it was just the foreign body that has caused this okay but most of the time foreign body they will say like sudden onset of cough usually associated by while taking food or while playing with something toys okay uh, no history of loose stools vomiting or rashes so this says that uh, i'm not dealing with any viral infection so this child is uh, very well not having any fever and rash and other viral infection is not there no history of allergy no new food exposure or foreign body aspiration why are we concerned about the arching actually why uh, it is actually a physiological maneuver that the child does whenever the gastric content is coming out the child tries to arch to prevent the aspiration but still some kind of aspiration occur and this aspiration that enters into the respiratory tract and produce a wheezy okay so coming on to the past history the child had a similar illness at 5 months of age 1 and 1/2 year and 3 2 years of age 
every time the child was hospitalized and managed with nebulization and following which the child improved. So this is the typical history that we get in a case of HRAD or asthma child. If it is a like older child, we can just say that uh, they may have a multiple episode of uh, V's and they must be uh, hospitalized for that and nebulization was given and improved. This child is not on any medication. This is very important because many of the time, if the child has had already a two or three episode, they must be put on controller or this oral, uh, sorry, MDI, meter dose inhaler, okay? Be it like a um, controller therapy or the rescue therapy. But this child, unfortunately, had no, uh, is not on any medication. For any case, it's very important to rule out a tuberculosis contact, as already Sir said. It's like uh, any respiratory case will be moving around the tuberculosis as it is uh, very common in our country. So contact history, no history of contact with the tuberculosis. Family history, this child had an elder sibling, which also had a similar complaint, but no history of nebulization in the elder sister. Okay, So this uh, uh, elder child also had a similar complaint, but not on nebulization or uh, not on MDA again. Mother has allergic symptom like running nose and sneezing on and off after exposure to any dust or smoke. No family history of asthma. This child did not have any family history of asthma. If a child of asthma is coming, usually we'll be having some kind of uh, family history of asthma or atopic aller allergic in any of the family members. So this mo uh, child's mother already has allergic symptoms, which is actually gaining more importance towards the asthma for this child. Nutritional history. The child is exclusively breastfed till nine months of age and semi-solids were introduced at nine months of age. And this child is breastfed till three years of age. Child is on vegetarian diet and is taking 1,200 kilocalorie and 10 gram of protein. So calorie deficit is not a big thing. So it's, it was fine. And the protein deficit is there, which is about four gram. So the child is taking a good nutritious food as far as it's concerned. Antenatal, natal and postnatal history is uneventful. We need not uh, elaborate about these things. Maybe the birth weight and the mode of delivery would be fine. And if there is no NSU stay, that would be fine. Okay. So unlike CP case, we need not elaborate about it. Okay. So what we have to elaborate in this RS case is like socioeconomic history and what is the kind of house they are uh, living in and past history, whatever they are taking. Um, so in this case, uh, the socioeconomic history is it live uh, the child lives in a pakka house and belong to upper socio upper middle socioeconomic status according to the modified Kuposomi scale. There is no overcrowding at home, so possibility of contagiousity is more. Father smokes cigarette at home too, so again this is an important allergen. So the father is doing it. Food is being cooked on gas stove. No history of pets at home, no history of mosquito repellent usage or presence of any construction site. So these are all called inducers. So in, uh, these can uh, precipitate the asthmatic attack or wheezing attack. Okay. So why is it important to ask for the cooking fuel or if the child is on gas? So if the child is using, if the mother is using some other like... Um, gas or uh, sorry cooking fuel or kerosene or some kind of thing so this can lead to a higher concentration of particulate matter in the home environment which in turn causes respiratory illness in the residents okay history of painting work done before a day at home so this could be a possible triggering factor as there is no like uh, construction site is not there and and even the father who is smoking at uh, home can also be a triggering factor so they may ask you, what are the things that can induce the wheeze in a child? So these are the possible inducers. That is dust mite, cockroaches, grass pollen, cat, dog, mouse, and rat. So it's very important to take a history of pets at the home. Okay. Immunization history. The child is immunized up to date as per universal immunization pro program or national immunization program. So the child is not given any optional immunization. So the examiner may ask that, what is your advice on immunization? Because any wheeze can be triggered even with the viral infection also. So 
what do you prefer is that you try to give pneumococcal and then influenza vaccine that would be your advice on this child okay developmental history the child attained age appropriate milestones so these are the crisp words that you can use in your presentation at the end of the history we'll be giving the summary so my child a three and a half year old male child born out of non consanguineous marriage came with a history of cough dry non paroxysmal and along with cold dyspnea and with no feed intolerance which is very important there is no some feed intolerance which means that i am ruling out this cardiovascular system with past history of recurrent respiratory tract infection that is relieved with the nebulization family history of atopic allergy present and father is a smoker child resides in a well ventilated pakka house and the probable di differential diagnosis is at the end of the history always try to give a differential diagnosis is hyperreactive airway disease or it could be a gas gastroesophageal reflux disease my dd for pneumonia will be coming later so i can think about the foreign body and congenital heart disease or if because of this um, recurrent respiratory tract infection and if it is associated with failure to thrive you can think about the immunodeficiency also so you can give four, three or four di differential diagnosis in this case so if it is more than 5 years we can just do a pft pulmonary function test and find that it is a asthma okay so diagnosing asthma below 5 years is actually a difficult one it is mostly by signs okay so these are the three points that helps you to name the child that they can be an asthmatic okay so asthma under 5 years is like it is diagnosed with wheeze or cough that happens with crying laughing or absence of respiratory infection apparently history of allergic disease allergic sensitization or asthma in a first degree relatives and clinical improvement during the 2 to 3 months of controller therapy and worsening after cessation so in this child we have a uh we uh, maybe a cough actually we we don't know whether the child had a wheeze or not while examining we can see and the child also had a allergic disease in a first degree relative okay and the child was not on any controller therapy so we may not able to say that so it could be asthma okay so other differential diagnosis what how can we rule out it could be a recurrent viral uh, respiratory tract infection so this can be like cough and cold for less than 10 days and no symptoms between infection so it can be a recurrent possible okay gr it is cough while feeding vomiting and poor response to asthma medication so the child already responded to the nebulization so possibility is very low foreign body it is usually abrupt and sudden okay and severe cough stridor during eating or playing and recurrent chest infection or cough can be found and it is usually a focal lung signs so when you are seeing in a case of a involvement of bilateral it it is very unlikely that it could be a foreign body congenital heart disease you have a cyanosis while feeding or any cyanotic spell already that happened because this child is pretty old child so cyanotic spell that happened and then succress suck cycle if it is a uh, infancy child we can just see that and forehead sweating all those things the child will have a failure to thrive tachycardia tachypnea and again poor response to a asthma medication in the case of immunodeficiency we have this recurrent fever infection and then failure to thrive so now with these ideas we are moving on to a general physical examination the child is alert and active and there is no pupil that is pale the child is not pale not ictus not sinus no clubbing no lymphadenopathy and then no pedal edema okay so if there is any specific finding in the head to toe examination you can mention about that if not leave it okay so when it comes to vitals heart rate is 112 per minute pulse rate is 110 per minute the pulse is regular rhythmic good volume and no radio radial or radio femoral delay respiratory rate is 58 per minute and abdominal thoracic temperature is normal and crt is less than 3 second okay anthropometry 
Weight of the child is 13 kg. It's above 50th centile. Length is 100 centimeter, which is above 50th centile. Weight for length is above 50th centile. Mid upper arm circumference is 16 centimeter. The nourishment is good then. Head circumference is 49 centimeter, which is also again above 50th centile of the WHO standard. So it's very important to plot all these findings in your draw chart. Okay. Now coming on to a systemic examination. So respiratory system always start from the upper respiratory uh, tract that is uh, oral, throat and then ear. They all appear to be normal. And then coming to the inspection, trachea seems in midline. So always inspection, say that it seems, seems, okay. Trachea seems to be in midline. Use of accessory muscle of respiration is present. That is suprasternal and intracostal retraction, okay. So in case of uh, pneumonia, we have more of the subcostal retraction and next comes the intercostal. As the severity increases, all this suprasternal head bobbing, all those occurs. Whereas in the case of asthma or hyperreactive airway disorder, we have the suprasternal, intracostal, and then uh, sternocleidomastoid, alanase as your uh, accessory muscle work, okay? And the apex bit is felt in the, uh, seen in the left fourth four intercostal space, one centimeter medial to the midclavicular line, okay? So no visible scars or sinuses and no skeletal deformity is there. And palpation, the trachea is in midline, chest expansion is normal and equal on both sides. Vocal femitus is normal. Had it been an older child, you may have uh, that AP uh, anthroposterior and the transverse diameter of the chest wall, it varies, okay? So it can become a barrel shaped chest. As this is a smaller child, we may not able to comment upon that, okay? So vocal femitus is normal. Sometimes it can be reduced also as the severity of the asthma is being increased, okay? So percussion, this is, uh, sorry, this is resonant in all areas. So which is again normal and sometimes it can also be hyper resonant, okay? Auscultation, normal vesicular breath sounds heard all over the chest wall. Bilateral V's heard in all the chest wall. Okay. In the case of pneumonia, you'll be getting a Krebs more than that of the V's. Okay. So in case of unilateral V's, it could be a single lung pathology like foreign body or any lymph node or the blood vessel that is constricting the bronchioles so that causing a V's. Okay. Cardiovascular system. S1, S2 hurt and no murmur. Per abdomen, the uh, is soft and no organomegaly. Sometimes we may get the liver palpable, but in that case, we, we have to say that the liver span it is normal because there's something called disruptosis. Whenever the lungs are hyperinflated, the liver is being pushed down. Okay. So in that case, disruptosis can happen. So lung. Uh, so, lung, sorry, liver uh, span will be normal in that case, though it is palpable. Cranial nerve, uh, sorry, so, uh, central nervous system, the child is alert, no focal neurological deficit. At the end of the examination, I'm coming with a summary that is a three year old, a three and a half year old male child born out of non consensus marriage came with a cough, dry cough mainly, and called dyspnea with no feed intolerance and no cyanotic spill with past history of recurrent respiratory tract infection that is being relieved with a nebulization. Family history of A2P, allergy, and father is a smoker. And respiratory examination revealed tachypnea, tachycardia, intracostal, and suprasternal retraction, which suggests that the airway is being enlarged below and uh, like um, and above uh, in the middle and uh, upper lobe is not air trapping is there in the case of uh, lower airway whereas it's not the case in the upper airway okay v is present all over the chest wall which without any fever so infectious cause is ruled out so my diagnosis will be hyperreactive airway disorder disease not on controller therapy as the child is not on any medication now the examiner will be asking, how will you proceed? So I would like to investigate. I just wanted to confirm that it is a hyperreactive airway disorder. So on chest X-ray, if it is a HRAD, we will be getting a hyperinflation of the lung field or it can be normal too. So in the case of pneumonia, you can get a consolidation or in case of tuberculosis, you will be getting a 
prominent lymph node, all those things can be seen, okay? Um, then complete blood count, I would like to do to see hemoglobin, eosinophil, and then total leukocyte count to rule out infection in the case of total leukocyte count. Eosinophilia may be present in the case of asthmatic child, okay? Electrolytes, why do you want to do electrolytes? Because I'm just going to give a salbutamol, so that may cause a hypokalemia. If the child is already on hypokalemic, so I have to make myself prepared for that. To rule out GERD, we'll be doing a 24 hour pH monitoring or the radionuclide screening. Okay, so we'll not be doing any pulmonary function test below five years. So don't uh, try to say that uh, I'm doing a pulmonary function test. So it's just generally a clinical diagnosis in the case of asthma. Okay, so how will you manage the case? So first, as the child is already on tachypnea and then uh, respiratory distress is there. So, nebulize with the salbutamol for three times repeatedly for every 20 minutes. Once improved, the nebulization can be shifted for four to six hours for a few days, okay? So, uh, in meantime, you have to monitor for hypoxia, any respiratory distress which is being worsened or metabolic acidosis or something shock the child is going for or irritability and then drowsiness because they may go, uh, go for an impending respiratory failure, okay? So, now this child has come back and it is like normal okay so the child is not having respiratory distress what is what will you do what will the ad advice for the discharge will be okay first we need to counsel the child for the need of meter dose inhaler okay so another very important question the parents will be asking is that will my child become asthmatic so depending upon these things we can say it's like it can be or it may not be, okay? So the chances you can say like 10 to 20% probability that the child may have an asthmatic, okay? So if you have asthma, that is with these symptoms, symptoms like cough, wheeze, and heavy breathing for less than 10 days during URTA. It could be like our case, okay? And two to three episodes per year. In our case, we got it like three episodes completely, which is like one episode per year, okay? and no symptoms between the episode. So in between the episode, the child is symptom free, okay? So that child can become asthmatic or may not be, okay? So some have asthma. So some of them can become an asthmatic, okay? That is like a symptom, cough, wheeze, heavy breathing for more than 10 days during URTA, okay? So these two categories are like, most of the thing are same, that most of them may have a asthmatic, so more than three episodes per year, severe episodes or night worsening and symptoms between the episode will be there. Like heaviness of breathing and the night symptom will be there most mostly and then uh, respiratory distress may be there, okay? So the thing is that most of them have asthma is that if the family history has an allergy, atopic uh, dermatitis or uh, any history of asthma, okay? So if the family history is also present, now this child can become an asthma, okay? So maybe this child, our child may progress on to asthma. So we, it is important that we have to put the child is on controller therapy, okay? So at the time of discharge, what will be your plan of uh, management? So here comes our GINA guidelines, okay? So GINA guidelines says that below five years of age, I'm just dealing only with these things, okay? So uh, if it is a first episode of wheeze, you may, this we consider step one. At first episode, you may just have to give a short acting uh, beta agonist. That is the salbutamol, um, MDA or whatever, it, okay? okay? So only this is a, this will be your rescue therapy. Only this salbutamol will be given as an inhaled uh, manner. So whenever the child is requiring or getting an acute exacerbation, the child is asked to take a salbutamol. Okay. So in case if the child is already having two or three rescue therapy within a week time. Okay. So within a week time, the child is had to take two or three salbutamol inhalational so then the child will be put on the controller therapy where in our case we have already had a multiple episode and the child is also having a um, family history of atopy so now it's better to put the child in uh, 
low dose inhaled corticosteroid that is the controller therapy okay so this low dose inhaled corticosteroid will be given daily daily for 3 months okay so with this period if the child is uh, getting better then we can taper and try to stop okay in case if the child is not getting better with these thing or getting a breakthrough episode within this 3 months itself then we should consider about increasing the dose or the moving on to step 3 that is double low dose inter, uh, inhaled corticosteroids okay so uh, you for this another 3 months you are going to put the child on double low dose inhaled corticosteroid say for example 100 microgram of budicard was given previously now the child got a breakthrough episode at least um, like within 3 months at least one or two episode then you have to think about doubling the dose okay so now the child will be put on 200 microgram of um, budicard okay so uh, this 200 microgram of budicard will be continued for 3 months again okay during this period if the child is going for a breakthrough then you actually it's like from the beginning you have to reassess the inhaler technique is there any problem or adherence if there is any problem and if even with this uh, doubling, uh, even after this doubling, if the child is not ha having a good control, then it's necessary that you have to refer it to a specialist. Okay? So re refer it to a specialist and then continue the controller therapy as far as possible. And in that case, if there is any issue, then you may even try to alter your diagnosis. You may even try to reconsider your diagnosis also. Next thing is that environmental modification should be done. Like if there is any um, dust prone area like carpet or uh, sofa or curtain, if these are all being used in the house, then it has to be cleaned then and there, like every alternate day or once in three days. And this uh, bed sheets, all those things has to be cleaned and dust prone area has to be inhibited. Okay. And then smoking within the home should be stopped okay so this will be your advice and that include your therapeutical advice as well as the general advice okay so thank you